you guessed it, we're back in the shed. Uh, bit of a bit of a break from the shed content, which has been good. I'm sure a few of you have liked that, but um, yeah, it's time to get back in here and finish doing what I need to do because Easter's like three weeks away and yeah, I need to get everything done. Uh, so I have actually finished the sliders. They're all done and the rear bar, there's a bit of progress made, but it still needs more work and, and whatever, but um, that'll be in a different uh, video. Today, we're gonna be doing the front shocks. So um, I've got the top mounts and I've got the shocks. I've had them for a couple of weeks. So I just haven't had time to do it. But uh, yeah, the plan is to do the front and um, do, the, do the upper mounts. And then I need to work out where the bottom mount's gonna go because of how it's all working. Um, yeah, I need to do the top first. And uh, so yeah, I need it. That's aimed for today. I wanna just get one side, the top done. And then if I have time, I'll do the other side, but um, then I can measure up the bottom mounts and then get them made up and then uh, yeah, finish the job. So the shocks won't be fully mounted today, but um, yeah, we should get a rough idea of where they're gonna be at. So we'll make a start on that. I'll also run you through how to set up your bump stop clearance and and do a few other suspension um, tricks and hacks. So um, again, I'm no expert, but I've done a lot of research and a lot of testing, um, and this is just my opinion on how to set up your car. Um, so yeah, take it how you want. But that is um, that's also what I'll do. I'll yeah, I'll do a bit of explaining and things like that. So stay tuned for that. So the shocks we're putting in the front are. Um, Pro Fender Triple Bypass 2.5s. Uh, they're a 10 inch travel. And the, the top mounts are ones that I've designed up and had made up. So if all does go well and it all, it all fits and uh, anyone's interested, I may sell a few of them, but I'll see how we go. Um, I have designed them, so I do not want to cut out the inner guard. So they're, um, they should, it'll be tight. I might have to trim a little bit off, but they should fit. Um, under the inner guard so that's a whole idea of this and then um, that's why I need to do the top mount and then um, find out where the bottom mount's going to go because the top mount is just where it's going to be so um, the 10 inch length is probably the bare minimum because the bypass shock sort of designed to be at 50-50 um, so you'd have 5 inch up travel 5 inch down travel but at 5 inch up travel that includes your bum stop as well so that's like yeah, bare minimum length, like, yeah, you might only have 90 mil of, um, of free travel before your bump stop, and that is absolute minimum. I like to try and have 100 mil. Um, so anyway, we'll set all this up. But um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure where the diff sits in relation to the chassis. So then when the wheels are off and it's on jack stands and, and whatever, I can get it in the exact position that it sits right now. Um, with this sort of weight on it. So so just quickly, I thought I'd talk about the shocks a bit more um, and why I chose to go this direction. So yeah, like I said, these are Pro Fender triple bypass shocks and pretty much what a triple bypass shock is, um, you have these tubes off the side. So that's a rebound bypass and these two are compression bypasses. Um, they start in the same spot on the compression from full extension, but they finish in different spots. If you can see under there, they're about two inch separation there. And then yeah, the one rebound uh, bypass tube. And then obviously, yeah, the remote res as well. So what it pretty much is, um, the piston inside, uh, a bypass shock as a general rough rule, are designed to be at 50-50, like I said. So um, the piston will sit like, you know, say roughly here somewhere and at ride height. And then what it is, is I've roughly measured it and the piston has about two and a half inches until it passes this bypass tube. Then it has another two inches and then the rest of it's just on the, on the shock valving. So what you can do is you can adjust these little bypass valves here to suit what works for you. So when the pistons in this stroke here, um, the these two bypass tubes are, in effect, are, are effective. So you can actually have 
uh, heavy valving on the piston and then you can back these bypass valves out and have a comfortable ride but then as it goes through its stroke um, you know ride height for two and a half inch might be nice and soft and then it gets into this two inches here when it's only using this bypass tube and you can stiffen it up a bit more and then um, yeah you have your bump zone in the top of the shock which is like I said just the piston valving so this is actually heavy valving um, I got I bought them from Superior Engineering and um, it's free for them to revalve your shocks before they leave so I went through um, all my notes from the race car and the coilovers so like I've I've played with them myself so I had a, a list of things that roughly worked on that car although the weight to be similar not exactly the same but but close enough and um, yeah they've been revalved so yeah it says here these shocks have been revalved to suit your requirements with a heavy bump so yeah that's the idea um, when you actually have the shock out and you free push it you know you can sit on the ground you can push it you can feel when it passes um, when it passes into the each stage of the compression stroke and then um, rebounds the same so these are obviously one-way valves in here so on the uh, when the pistons coming out these tubes don't affect it um, so as it comes out you can feel that it's real slow rebound and then because they supply these um, fully wound out um, obviously you've got to adjust them yourself so real slow out and then it gets into this um, section here and then it's real fast and then um, and then the rest of it wherever the piston ends is real slow again so um, again yeah like so if you case out the shock um, the last little bit will be real hard and the rebound will be real hard as well so it won't bounce off the bump stop and then obviously you can yeah, tune the rebound to suit um, because most of the time the car's going to be driving in this vicinity of the rebound so you can tune to how you like and then yeah at full droop um, the last little bit will be nice and, and firm so it won't pull the shock out but I am actually running uh, I will put limiting straps on it so that's another thing I've got to get but I need to do the bottom mount so then I can find out where full droop is and then um, measure limit straps and whatever and blah 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 so um, there's still a lot of work to do but uh, again I could have just gone the superior 2.5 bolt-ins uh, which I'm actually doing in the rear because this is too hard to do in the rear without lifting the cab off to get to the top mount but yeah I've always wanted to play with a bypass shock ever since I'd done the coilovers in the race car so this is kind of exciting I've always just I've liked this amount of adjustability um, to get the perfect ride so I'm looking forward to getting these in and they're fairly well cost effective I would suggest like I've had messages of people asking me if they're a couple grand each no they're like 660 bucks each from Superior so even like the Superior 2.5s are like 835 for a bolt-in so fair bit cheaper than the bolt-in option but obviously I've got to fabricate everything up and the cost of the mount and everything comes into play but um yeah and you get the the bolt style ends um you don't get like you get rid of the pin style factory ends which yeah I hate but that's fine it's no big deal and worst case scenario if something was to happen um I could just get a, a rear patrol shock and put it in the front and just make it work so if, yeah, if you're in the middle of nowhere and something happened um yeah go down somewhere and get a rear shock put it in it, it would work good enough so um yeah at the start I was thinking if you mount this shock you're stuck with this shock pretty much you are but yeah in emergency you could use a rear shock and they do have a left and right side as well which is really handy which I'm currently finding out that um yeah the left and right it's in relation to where the bypass tubes are mounted and the res tubes mounted in relation to like the top mount and things like that so that's also handy to know that yeah if you're buying something like this or you're buying it second hand um, I'd definitely well definitely make sure that there is a left and right otherwise um you will struggle and when talking bypass tubes what these do is just bypass fluid past the piston so um, yeah like I said you back these right out and as the pistons going up it forces fluid around oh shit this way sorry 
And uh, yeah, that way it's not just the valving in the shock that is coming into effect. So yeah, it's just bypassing shock fluid around. You can close them all the way off, both of them, and just have whatever shock valving's in there. But uh, yeah, the beauty of this is you can have the valving in the shock near enough and you can then fine tune it with these. All right, so I've just unbolted one side and um, what I've got to do is cut along this edge and then around and down and just cut this, this shock mount section off of the um, coil hat and then the mount sits on top and then, yeah, it obviously mounts off that. So that's the next job is to I'll pull apart the other side and um, cut that off. I'm going to pull all the brake lines and that off and just get everything out of the way so I'm not fighting with anything. I thought I'd quickly show you something. Um, these are Superior 2.0s. They're to suit a five inch lift, I think. So I think I'm pretty sure they're 10 and a half inch. Um, and you can't max out these shocks before the tie rod ends bind up. So, you know, for everyone that wants to run mega long shocks and whinge about wanky flex and things like that, without changing your drag length, you're not gonna get very far. You need to go to a heme joint or something like that because um, yeah, pretty much as it sits there, it nearly, um, that's nearly bound up and it's still got probably an inch, inch and a half left of stroke in the down travel. So yeah, that's one thing. Just buy the shocks suited to your lift, maybe one inch longer, but um, yeah, don't get caught up in all this wanky flex stuff that you know everyone reckons to fit the longest shock possible and blah 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 because then you lose up travel as well and um, up travel is key with a car without up travel um, your car is forever going to ride like crap which that also brings me to my next point don't get caught up with all the people that say keep your car as low as possible that's rubbish um, set the car up for how you're going to drive it because 90% of the people that claim low is better, um, the cars don't even see the harder tracks that need the car low. So some wild off camber stuff and things like that is where a low car is good. But for a car like this, even the race car, I actually lifted that up probably two inches to get more up travel. Um, yeah, with a car like this, up travel is more important than down travel. So yeah, don't get caught in the wanky flex stuff or low is good. Um, yeah, because I've seen plenty of cars that are a low standard lift or two inch lift with 37s. They have about 50 mil of up travel or less. And um, yeah, they just handle like junk. They're like pogo sticks bouncing off the bump stops. So yeah, this has got four inch springs, which is odd which is probably pretty good. Five's tipping it, but I wouldn't go any more than five, but three to four is good. Um, if you're running 35s, you can get plenty of up travel, um, providing you have the right length shocks, but I'll show you that in a minute. But um, yeah, 37s are a different story. I've seen people with yeah, no lift or two inch lift in 37s, and they claim it rides good. They're lying to you, because um, even if they have maximum bump stop clearance, the shock's gonna bottom out or the wheel's just gonna hit the guard. So yeah, unless you're doing some wild modification guard chops and, and all that sort of stuff that you don't necessarily need to do, um, yeah, stick with going a little bit higher. You can go a little bit stiffer, stiffer sway bar. This actually handles, it handles really good. And with these other shocks going in, it's gonna handle even better. So yeah, don't get caught up in that rubbish. So, and I'll just show you how to set up your bum stops, all right? This is, a question that gets asked a lot, but it's very, very simple to do. So I'll quickly show you. Um, so obviously the drag link's unbolted because, yeah, like I said before, it binds up. Um, the spring's out, which is step number one. And now um, step number two is to just jack it up. So we'll do that. And it's as simple as that. So you make sure your panard's adjusted properly and... Um, yeah, obviously your radius arms and that are all bolted in, but that's it. So um, I just jack the car up onto the bum stops until it starts lifting the front of the car up. Um, then you know they're fairly well compressed, but on a hard hit, they will compress more, which is why I always leave about 30 odd mil 
Um, with these bum stops, you can obviously get different bum stops and they compress different lengths. So keep that in mind. You need to find out sort of how much they compress or yeah, allow a little bit more on the shock shaft, but that's it. So these are spaced uh, one inch, the bum stop, which is good. And um, yeah, there's still enough there to not bottom the shock out. So if you can imagine if this inch spacer wasn't there, this shock would close further and case the shock out. Uh, you don't want to do that. That's how you blow the shock out or blow the mounts off the diff or, or whatever. Um, Cause it's just like, yeah, full bottom out. That is not good. Um, so that's pretty much it. Just jack the car up until the whole weight, the whole front of the car is weighted onto the bump stop and then work out how much to allow. Like I said, with these factory in and bump stops, um, yeah, I like to allow about 30 mil when the car's lifted on them. And um, I do like these bum stops. I prefer these because they're short and hard. They have a little, the little dampener pad, but the rest of it's solid. Um, so the idea behind that is the shorter the bum stop and the harder it is, it is gonna be harsh when it hits the bum stop, but there is more up travel before it hits the bum stop. So um, yeah, you don't get uncontrollable dampening forces off the bump stop interfering with your shock so that allows for a better ride the, yeah the more free play you can have with your shock um, the more up travel uh, the better your car's going to ride it's as simple as that and that's why yeah that's why i like to run the four inch um, springs especially like if your car is set up for high country driving constant bumps ruts dozer cuts and whatever you know drains and everything um, yeah, I like to go a little bit higher so you can drive a little bit faster and you're not constantly bouncing off the bump stop because uh, yeah, in reality, like I said, 90% of the people that claim low is good, um, they'll never have their car in a position where it warrants them to have such a low car. So yeah, unless your car's a full trailer warrior and you literally trailer it to the hardest tracks in the state or the country where it's just like crazy off camber and things like that, um, yeah, don't get caught up in the low is better because yeah, it's not it does have its place for sure But for the majority of people, uh, yeah, just forget it and um, The reason why I say get the shock that's suited to your spring or you know about an inch longer is probably maximum um, If you can imagine say if I had say I had a hundred mil of up travel between the bump stop and the the plate um, and it was set up like this uh, For every inch Longer in the shock body you have to space your bump stop one inch But if you're keeping the same springs that chews out an inch of your up travel. So Yeah, say I went um, say I had a hundred mil and then um, I had a two inch longer shock So that means I'd have to space the bump bump stop an extra two inches or thereabouts, sometimes the shock length vary, but we'll call it two inches. So then I've gone from 100 mil of up travel to 50 mil of up travel, just like that. That's gonna inhibit the car riding any good because um, they are a heavy car. There's no ifs or buts about it. And a shock can't work with minimal up travel. So the shock can't do its job with 50 mil. Um, it's just bouncing off the bump stop and then because you've gone a longer shock, because you reckon, yeah, flex is sick, um, then it doesn't matter because your drag link will bind up and you won't get the full effects of the down travel anyway. And even if you do, like you, the further you go down, um, you can see already it's up, the, the panard's up, uh, the, the pin's up. But as you drop it down, yeah, the panard twists the other way and it binds up in the bush. So, yeah, don't get caught up in that. Um, because there's a lot more than just banging big shocks in and getting wanky flex. It's uh, yeah, it's not worth it. Just set the car up properly and um, it's happy days. All right, enough of me talking. I better uh, do some work, but I'm sure I'll think of more stuff throughout the video. Um, but yeah, I'll get into it. And before anyone pulls me up on it, if you're still running small tires, the small lift is good. So yeah, the bigger the tires, um, the less clearance you have in your guard um, or the longer shocks or whatever so yeah if you're still running small tires the small lift's good but yeah because I run 35s 37s that's why I like the uh, 4 inch and I forgot to space the bum stop 
Um, you can either space it up here, um, but the factory Nissans only have a stud, so you'd have to make up a um, like maybe two bits of plate with the thread in either end and bolt it through the coil hat and then screw this into it. Um, or you can do what I've done, and the factory diff actually has a hole in the um, this spring perch bit. Um, I'll just drill it out, tap the thread, and this is actually a body block. Uh, um, I've just cut it in half, so one on either side. So yeah, you just bolt that in. But the longer you go on the bottom, the harder it is to get the spring in because the spring is going to go up, up and over this bottom bit. So yeah, if you have super long springs and you space this fairly high, you probably won't get the spring in. Um, you'll have to unbolt it, put the spring in and bolt it back down. But um, yeah, either way works. Um, but yeah. Well, we're making some progress. Um, I've cut off all the, the mounts and that, roughly cleaned them up. I just wanted to get this in here to see the height. It's a little bit tight. Um, we're gonna have to work out trimming it down, maybe 10 mil, probably just off the bottom. And then, um, yeah, it looks like we've got to trim the back of this top plate. So these um, fish plates sitting hard up against the chassis. But um, I know I'm probably gonna get asked why I'm not running hydro bumps. Um, I do run them in the race car and they're two inch or two and a half inch stroke. Um, but in my opinion, not really worth it in a car like this, especially with a, uh, only a 10 inch shock. Um, so yeah, if you're talking five inch up travel and then you got two inches of bump stop travel and then you still have to have a, um, a final bump um, for the hydro. So if you have a really hard hit, you will case a hydro out, which I've seen plenty of times and they blow the top off the hydro bust them out or whatever. So um, yeah, if you take that all into account, um, yeah, you're only gonna have like three inch at best um, of up travel before it hits the hydro. And then you got hydro interference. Although it's better than like a long rubber bump because you can tune the hydro bump and um, yeah, to not affect or to affect the, um, the shock stroke. But um, yeah, in something like this, in my opinion, not worth it and I'm not gonna do it. I just prefer the short hard ones, uh, maximum up travel with uh, no interference of anything. All right, so I've had a few hold ups today, so I've got nowhere near where I wanted to get to. But um, as usual, the weather's bloody teasing. It's, uh, it's bloody mint for a drive out there, but this is where I've got to. So the top mount's roughly in place. I did have to do a, um, a little bit of panel beating just knock it around, just shape it up a bit with the um, with the hammer. Uh, I did trim this down about five mil. Um, couple couple little minor adjustments just to get them fit. It is tight and um, quite difficult, but it does look like it's actually going to work, which is um, quite exciting. But the bottom mount's obviously not done, so you know I could still move it around, and this top bit's adjustable, but. Um, I just had to, because it's as low as a tie rod, um, when you turn and left on the left hand side, the tie rod actually drops. So it's gonna go underneath. And then, um, yeah, when you turn and right over this side, it raises up and then I'll make the mount. So it doesn't interfere with the uh, tie rod. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky um, fitting it all in. And as you can see, like there is pretty tight clearance just here. Um, but I can trim that back and, and move things around. Um, yeah, at the moment, I just need to sort out um, yeah, where it's gonna fit. So it's all looking like it's gonna work. All right, well, yeah, like I said, I'm a fair way behind because I had a bit of other stuff to do today, uh, but I did get to where I wanted to be. But uh, yeah, it would have been nice to do the other side as well, but uh, I can do that tomorrow. But what I've done is I've just cut out a, a bottom mount uh, just out of cardboard, I've measured it all up and um, yeah, it should work. Everything seems to work. We've got tie rod clearance where it sits and in the morning what I'll do is I'll just make a dummy mount, a bit of flat bar with a bolt in it and just weld it to the diff and I'll cycle through uh, the suspension up and down and, and try and flex it out and that. Just make sure that, um, probably won't be able to see, but the clearance between the shock and the coil hat is pretty tight. So I just want to make sure that that all works. And then, um, yeah, this mount should be, well, regardless, this mount is going to work on the bottom. And uh, yeah, if I'm too tight there, I'll just adjust the top mount. So 
Um, I'm going home. Uh, I've had enough, so I'll come back nice and refreshed tomorrow and finish that, do the other side, and then probably find something else to do, maybe work on this stuff. So we'll see you then. All right, back in here. Um, it's bloody early, but I had a thought last night in bed, and I did have someone message me uh, this morning, and um, what I'm going to do is instead of mounting the bottom mount that way, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees, if I can, and mount it that way. So that way, on flex, um, yeah, I don't, I don't get any bind up, and um, yeah, because... If, if you have it the other way, it can in under full flex, it can bind up the hem joints in the end and then limit the flex or put pressure on the mounts, bend them and break them or whatever. So by mounting it that way, it uh, helps reduce that. So I've got to draw up another mount quickly and then um, I'll probably get onto the other side actually. Righto, so I've been tinkering for a little bit and I've made up this mount just out of cardboard. Um, it's just easier that way. That way I could slip it in there and, and see visually what it looks like. And when it goes to get cut out, yeah, I've just drawn measurements on it. I can just drop it off there and say, I need a couple of these. So yeah, it all fits pretty good. Just slips over the bottom like this. And then yeah, there'll be a bolt in the end. That's at full lock. So uh, this will be a little bit closer. But yeah, it'll be tight on the, the bolt head there, but it should be good enough. There should be enough clearance there. Um, and then yeah, the other way goes underneath like that. So should be all good. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, having the, the bolt in this direction, you can imagine it flexing up, um, like up and down this side. So it sort of pivots the shock can pivot easily um, where where this way to have the shock lean in and out it's working on the heme joints so that's why yeah giving it the spin um, should help with all that and it actually seems like the hardest bloody thing is going to be mounting the res so that's something i'm going to tinker with now because when i drop the um that bottom mount off um if i have to get anything cut out to mount the res i want to do it at the same time so then i can get it all back at once and then yeah hopefully by next weekend have the job finished it's bloody early it's like 6 30 but um i'm keen to get into it i do have the shock mounts thanks to gippsland cnc um gave them a pretty tight time schedule but they got it done which is awesome so i just quickly clamped one together um, as you can see they come up pretty nice so that's today's job. Well, actually, this morning's job is to do that. I'm gonna do that right now. Um, tack that in, check for clearance, um, flex it up, do what I have to do, uh, make sure it's all good, and then uh, measure the bump stops because I've got to get some made up. So that'll be that'll be this morning's job. Probably do the other side. Um, I have run into dramas with the shocks, but you'll probably see that in the next video. I've got to do something dodgy for Easter. So you'll see that in the next video. And um, yeah, that's that's this morning's job. So get, I wanna get yeah, the shocks all done and mounted in because um, yeah, I've also got other stuff going on which you'll also see in the next video. And um, I've got to finish this all off because there's only two weekends left until Easter and there is still a ridiculous amount of work to do. So I'm gonna get cracking in this bottom shock mount and um, Hopefully it all comes up good, and then on to the next jobs. Well, that's one side shock mount done. Come up pretty good, actually. So I'll get a nice good weld around the diff, and underneath this butts into the diff brace on the knuckle. So should be nice and strong. Um, yeah, I just, I sat it up, I, I tacked this bottom piece in, and then bolted these two plates to the shock, and then sat that underneath, and check for clearance and that. I did have to clearance the edges a little bit um, because yeah, the drag link um, actually comes close to the nut here, but then you turn the other direction and the drag link actually goes underneath. Sorry, the tie rod goes underneath. And um, yeah, so I had to clearance these corners a little bit to make room for the tie rod going underneath, but it's not much. 
Um, but yeah, that should sort it out. I'm just going to put it up in there, tack it in, and then start up and down and, and checking out the, the clearances of the shock. All right, so this is the um, tie rod. So as you can see, going, going right hand down on the right hand side, it actually goes underneath. It's pretty close clearance, but it'll be right. And then you turn it left hand down, and uh, yeah, a little bit of clearance there with the nut. Not much, but like I said, it is tight. Um, it was a little bit fiddly, like having to just notch out a few bits and pieces to get full lock either side. And I do have my lock stops a little bit wound in. So you couldn't have the lock stops out because what that would do is just hit the tie rod on the bolt, which probably wouldn't affect too much, but something you sort of don't want to do. Um, and that way is probably pretty similar as the bracket ramps down, the, the rod end would hit the hit the bracket. So you couldn't have no lock stops, but that's not good for your CVs anyway. So now this is a full droop. And at full droop, because of the way the, the panard set up, the diff comes to the right hand side, and under full compression, the diff goes over to the left hand side. So um, if there's clearance on this shock at ride height, on the right hand side it's pretty much guaranteed to be all right but on the left hand side it's a different story um, and then obviously the opposite at full compression um, i'll have to make sure this side because the diff will be over that way a bit more um, i'll have to check this side and then yeah vice versa with the other side so it all looks pretty good there's plenty of clearance so as i thought it came away here so there's yeah, there's a good 10 15 mil clearance gap there um, i'll chuck her up in full compression and see what it looks like I'm having a little bit of dramas at full lock, right hand down. The bleed, the bleeder for the um, caliper hits the uh, bypass tube. But I did leave plenty of room. It is mounted sort of all the way to the outside. And I've got enough clearance on the inside to shift it over a little bit. Um, but it hits and it's pretty much on full lock. So um, I won't need to move it over much. 5, 10 mil, and that, that'll give enough clearance. And we are hitting the coil hat, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. I could probably clearance it a little bit um, by just bending it in a touch and things like that. Um, I could move the top mount out a little bit as well. I've got a little bit of room left. So I haven't decided yet, but as you can see, the shock's pretty much bottomed out and there is, I took the bump stop spacer out, so that's just factory bump. So, yeah, it's going to be, the bump stop spacer might be 50 to 60 mil, um, and that should be pretty well suffice to suit this. So you still get a lot of up travel. So I've got plenty of um, clearance in here, even turning it the other way. I'll show you as quickly if I can. You can see how much room is between the shock and the tire. There's probably like 60 to 70 mil. So there's heaps of room. Um, there's heaps of room going lock to lock. So pretty much I can just move the shock, adjust it to wherever I need it to, um, which yeah, makes that easy. So um, I'll just cut the bottom mount off and uh, move it in a little bit. And I reckon I'll clearance the coil tower, but um, I'll put a spring in there and make sure we've got no clearance issues either. But quickly, if you want to chop your guards, this is how you do it as well. So put your tire on that you're running, put it on the bump stops that you, so put the shocks on, space your bump stops, and then when you got your bump stop spacing worked out, put the wheel on left and right, like it is. Undo the drag link so your steel mill and that's not turning, so it's easier to, easier to turn. Um, and yeah, cut guards to suit. So another little hot tip for you. All right, so I was trying to figure out how I could flex the front out because, yeah, patrols do not flex good in the front. So I was like, how can I do it? Anyway, come up with this idea. <laughs> Scissor jack between the chassis and the div. So as it sits there, it's like within, I think it still had two and a half inches to go before the shock would, have, would be topped out on the other side, but it's never going to flex the front that hard because it'll just pick a wheel up before then because the fronts don't flex that good. So um, I was just checking for clearance in here, which there is still plenty. 
there's probably like 30 mil between um, the bypass tubes and the tire with the 37 on which is a bit more of an offset than the other rims and obviously it's got the side lugs in it too so um, the res mounts are zip tied there so that'll be out of the way there's plenty of room with that um, and yeah that's all I needed to check so the other thing to check would be at full droop so I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet um, so yeah whether I get the forklift in and lift the front up and have the 37s on with the shocks in and droop it right out um, yeah I might have to do that but I'm going to do the other side first and then um, obviously I still got to modify this side but everything fits the 37s the only thing I'd have to do is maybe a little bit of guard massaging but not too much I mean the 37s aren't going to be on any that often so I'll probably just deal with them scrubbing a little bit here and there so it is what it is but it is yeah like I said it is tight in there a little bit tight but definitely I'm looking forward to driving this all right so it's been a pretty long day um I didn't expect it to take this long but as usual uh it takes longer than you think so I've um yeah mounted the left hand side down the bottom as you can see um so I just need to weld it all out but I'm not going to do that until I've I get the um remote res mount which is getting made up as well so that'll be here next week and I'll do that next weekend um, and then weld it all out and finish it up so you won't see the finished product in this video because I'm going to end it here um but yeah I am pretty keen to sell these as kits so what it'll be is um the top mount the bottom mount the res mount and the bum stop spacer and yeah pretty much that'll just be um like a flat pack i guess and yeah you weld it together chuck it in and that suits uh like yeah pro fender 10 inch shock with four inch spring that gives you about 50 50. it's actually a little bit more because yeah i made it a little bit more so i've got about five and a half inch up travel and four and a half down um so i'm pretty keen to sell all that as a kit so yeah your bum stop spacing's right and everything mounts in there perfect um you could use a king 10 inch uh, bypass shock i don't know about fox i didn't check but something you can check if that's the route you're going but they have about an inch and a half shorter close length so you can use the same mounts use a king shock go back to a three inch lift still retain your 50 50 um, shaft so that's one thing yeah if you do want to like mount something like this without cutting your guards out um, yeah, you can use a king and that yeah, still remains at a three inch which most people run anyway um, and yeah like I was not really considering kings because what you got to remember is yes the quality would be better uh, but at the end of the day the shock is only as good as it's valving so there's a lot of people that'll buy this shock for instance without telling them any valving specs or anything along those lines they'll bolt it in ah this is this shock's rubbish the shock's junk i'm going to buy something else the shock is only as good as it's valving remember that you can buy the cheapest shock uh, my coilovers is probably a good example the cheapest shock valve them properly and most people won't be able to tell the difference that's the reality of it um, so keep that in mind when you're thinking about spending big bucks um, it's probably in my opinion not really worth it um, but that's just me and you know take these superior shocks for instance my opinion again best bang for buck shock you can buy it's on the market hands down by far but there are people that say oh no they're rubbish because uh you know my car did this and my car did that if you valve them the way you want them they'll be perfect so keep that in mind when you're playing with shocks they're only as good as it's valving and uh yeah it's a good chance to actually learn how to valve shocks uh, playing with your own stuff so and the same goes if you spent yeah if you went and bought kings spent the money on kings they're probably four or five grand or whatever um for a set and the valving was no good uh yeah you'd feel like you wasted your money so keep that in mind again i'll say it again shock's only as good as it's valving so yeah, i'll wrap the video up here you'll probably see the finished product in the next video maybe or the one after depend on what i decide to do um i've for Easter, I've got to do something dodgy, um, but you'll see that whenever in the next episode or the next 
next um, two videos. So keep an eye for that. Um, it is a little bit annoying, but it's what I have to do to go away at Easter, which is a bit of a bummer. And um, yeah, if you are interested in a kit like this, find me on Instagram. I prefer Instagram. If you can, look me up on Facebook. Send me a message uh, if you are interested and I'll see how much interest there is to see if it's worth doing. Yeah, I can see the amount of footage I've got, so this video is gonna be long. So if you have stuck around to the end, you are definitely appreciated. Um, hopefully you don't get too bored, it's just me talking crap most of the time, but hopefully you learn something. Um, I try and give out as much information as possible so people can learn as well. Uh, that's the aim of what I'm doing here. But um, yeah, if you did enjoy the video, if you did learn something from it, um yeah give us a like even comment whatever i'm all about discussing things i know uh some of this is all just my opinion um and people have varying opinions which is fine um but yeah you'll see the rest of this the res mount and a couple other things we'll do and the dodgy thing i got to do for easter coming up shortly so stay tuned for that and we'll see you then